When creating Apple scripts, we will be using the script editor application that comes with the Mac. You can find this in your utilities folder. The quickest way to get here is to type command shift U in the finder. Before we start writing code, we need to save our script as an applet. The main reason for doing this is it allows us to save as we go and have the compiler check our code for errors as we write it. It also will change the colors used in the code to make it easier to read. Choose the save as command from the file menu and in the resulting sheet, type a name for your applet, define a save location and choose application from the file format dropdown, then click save. If you've never coded before, there are some concepts we need to talk about as we write the code so that you know what the code is doing. We're going to create an applet, which is a little program that contains our Apple script and can be run by double clicking it or by dropping files onto it. First off, we need to make sure that we are commenting our code. Comments explain to someone reading the code exactly what that section of code is doing. This makes it easy to edit especially if you are revisiting it long after you wrote it, or if you are giving it to someone else to amend. Single line comments in Apple Script are written with a double dash. The first thing we need to do is set some global variables. Variables are small pieces of memory for the program to use that will hold some data that we can change. Declaring them as global means that they are accessible to the whole script and not just the function that they are declared in. Next, we need to include some extensions, which allow us to use the image editing functions of macOS. Lastly, we need to declare some properties. These properties define the types of file that the script will convert and the types of file that it will convert to. Now that we have set up the items that the script will use, we can start to write the functional parts of the script. If a script is double clicked, it needs to ask the user to select some images that they want to convert. This line of code does just that. It creates a variable named chosen images and assigns the files that the user chooses to it. The user is prompted with the following text, select images for conversion, making sure they are of the file types defined in our open types property. Multiple files are allowed to be selected, but not hidden files. Once we have the files, we want to pass them to the convert images function. A function is a self-contained piece of code that does something. Functions are great for writing a piece of code that you may want to use multiple times within your script, as it saves having to type the same code out over and over again. This also saves on space and makes the code easier to read and maintain. We will define our function a little later on. If instead of double clicking, our user drops a selection of files onto the applet, then we need to be able to take those images and process them. This next section of code does that. The onOpen and endOpen commands encapsulate the code you want to execute on those files. In our case, it's the ConvertImages function again. So now we can define the ConvertImages function so that we can actually do something with the files that we have opened. To define our function, we write the on keyword followed by the name that we are giving to our function. The brackets contain any parameters that we are passing into the function. In our case, it's just the images that we want to convert. Next, we're going to add a little bit of error handling code. It's very simple and more code should be added if we want our applet to be more robust. However, for the purposes of this small tool, it's fine to use just this. Essentially, we want to check if files have been passed into the function. We do this with a conditional statement. In our case, the if statement. The number of items of images to convert gets the number of files that have been passed into the function. And next, we check to see if there are more than zero of them. If there are, then the next section of code all the way down to the end if statement will be run. If not, then it will be skipped. Assuming we do have files that we want to work with, then we need to ask the user which file format they would like to use. Here, we set the global variable file extension 
to one of the entries from the save type property. We create a dialog box we present to the user with a title and a prompt. We choose the names for the buttons that will be displayed and make sure the user can only select one file type. Next, we need to iterate through all of the files and complete the conversion step. In order to iterate through the files, we use a loop, which does just exactly what it says. It loops through each file and executes the code within on that file that it's currently on. In AppleScript, we are using the repeat function, and all the code down to the end repeat will be executed on each image using the file stored in the current image variable from the collection of files in the images to convert. Next, we need to define the path where we would like the images to be saved to. In our case, we're going to put the converted files back into the same location as the original. In order to do this, we need to interact with the system events extension. So we tell system events to get the path of the current image and put it into our save to folder variable. The image events extension that we are using to do the conversion requires us to open and close the image that we are working on in order to process the conversion. This line of code tells image events to open the current image and store it in the global this image variable. The try command allows for more error handling. However, if we omit the error handling code, the command will skip the offending lines of code instead of halting the script. That's what we are going to use. However, if we wanted our code to be more robust, then we would have to add in that error handling code. That's beyond the scope of this video, but if you are interested, there are plenty of resources online that can get you started with it. We use a try to suppress any errors and then tell image events to try and save the current image in the save location with the file extension that was selected by the user. This does the conversion in one go as it writes out a new file with the format of the extension. Next, we add a small delay so that the image has a chance to save before we move on to processing the next one. Again, we use a try to suppress any errors and then tell image events to try and close the file. And that's it. Our function is now complete and with it the functionality of our little image conversion applet. But wouldn't it be nice to give the user some feedback as to how the conversion is going? Well, that is actually quite easy to do by setting the properties that are defined by the progress object in scripting additions. We add a counter variable so that we can track which image we are processing, as well as a variable to store the total number of files that we are processing. Then we set the initial states of the properties here before any work is done on the files. Next, we want to update the progress on each iteration of the loop. We add one to the counter and then use that to change the property on the progress object. Again, we add a small delay to make sure that the progress indicator is seen by the user in case the processing of the files is very quick. Lastly, we reset the properties of the progress object so they are ready for the next time it needs to be used. Now that we have finished writing our code, we hit save one last time and the result is a little application with the scripting icon. Here are some sample images that we can use to test the applet. I hope you've enjoyed this small Apple scripting tutorial and will find the resulting tool useful in speeding up your workflow. Apple Script is a powerful tool that you can add to your arsenal and can open up a whole new world of automation that can help you to use your Mac in a smarter way. Thank you.